Do you even need an impact driver or can you get away with just a regular drill? How exactly do these impact drivers work and what makes them so special? And if you're gonna grab one of these impact drivers, what's the best battery platform to get into? Do you need an impact driver? Well, let's ask our old friend Leroy over here. Leroy, you own your own home, don't you? Yeah, I, I definitely have a home. Well, you ever think about maybe building a deck out back? I, I need a deck in the worst way. This is what I want you to do, Leroy. I've built a little mock-up deck here. Go ahead and take that old DeWalt drill that you've been using for the last 15 years and go ahead and see how easy it is to drive the deck screws in. Now do me a favor, Leroy. Go ahead and put the rest of those screws in with this impact driver. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Wowee! Wow, that was something. That was unexpected. Um, how the heck does that thing work, Mr. Funny? So how does an impact driver work and why is it so much better than a drill for driving fasteners? Well, with the drill, essentially you are applying a continuous rotational force. If you were going to put a nail in with the drill, essentially what you're doing is putting the hammer on the end of the fastener and just putting force and shoving the thing right into the board. There's a tremendous amount of force. That's why a heavy duty drill will come with one of these handles because you have to put the equal amount of resistance that that thing is putting out. And that's why with a drill bit, either like a, a Robertson or a Phillips bit, there's a lot of pressure that builds up on that bit. And if they're slightly off axis, that bit's gonna cam out. Now what an impact driver does, instead of continuous pressure, it's a hammer. It impacts. <laughs> Essentially it's just... So the way that manifests in the impact driver is it has a little rotational hammering disc. Inside the chuck of the impactor, there's a little T in here that gets struck by these things rotating along. And on these little nubs here, there's a little angle. They're not quite square, so they're sloped in a little bit. Same thing on this little T in here. There's a little bit of a slope. So when those two slopes meet, this impactor spins and then the two slopes meet. It hits it, supplies that hammering force, and then this thing has a spring on here, it cocks back, so it goes up, and then this little flat spot slides along this little flat spot on here. So there's a momentary release of the, of the torque that you would feel in your hand. Like when you're hammering down this nail, pop. It supplies the force, and then the hammer recoils slightly, so it's not, you're not feeling all that force in your hand. It's the same thing in this hammer drill. So this little thing strikes this little T in here, boom, it supplies the rotational force. This thing goes back and then it snaps back down. And as it snaps back down, what it does is it puts a little bit of pressure in the bit. So the rotational force is taken off the bit and then it gets a little tap. It'll seat itself back into the screw. That's why impact drivers don't cam out nearly as much. Leroy, are you smoking, dude? What's going, are you smoking? <laughs> man, that was, that was an amazing explanation. I, I understand now, man. Um, hey, if I'm gonna get one of these impact drivers, what, which one should I get? Yeah, if you're gonna get an impact driver, your best bet is to get one of the impact drill combos. If you're a homeowner, I'm gonna recommend the Makita or the Milwaukee battery platform, just because there's so many tools for homeowners. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, these are my four best videos right here. Check them out. Thanks so much for watching. Leroy, give this impact drill a try. Wow, you are really bad at catching. <laughs>